Stop early voting started today at sites all across North Carolina. WECT's Raina Crooms reports there are changes in this election year that voters need to know before heading to the polls. Yes, voters need to have a valid photo ID if they want to cast their vote this year. If they don't have a photo ID, they have to fill out a form that looks like this in order for their vote to count. I spoke to directors in Columbus and Brunswick counties, and they say having this photo ID implemented has not been an issue so far. As of right now, we haven't had any problems or any issues with that, people giving IDs. Um, we did the last couple of days have a few more people coming in to actually get IDs made, the voter IDs made. But the photo IDs are not the only new change this year. There are new deadlines for requesting and returning absentee ballots, and observers at polling stations will have more freedom to view the voting process, but will need to be clearly identified and prevented from interfering with the election. I'm told that more than 700 people have already voted in Brunswick County on Thursday, and officials hope the momentum continues throughout the early voting period. I think early voting is really convenient for voters because if you come to the early voting site, you can go to any of the open locations in your county. Um, so you don't have to go to a location based on where you live, which is what you have to do on election day. Most voting locations close at 7 o'clock. Early voting will end on March 2nd. Reporting in Brunswick County, Raina Crooms, WECT News. Now, there are several different types of photo ID that will be accepted at those voting locations. They include a state driver's license, your passport, college or university ID, a government ID, or even a charter school employee ID. A military or veteran's ID is also acceptable. If you don't have any of these, you can file for a free photo ID from your county's board of elections. Go ahead. Plenty of people make mistakes when it comes to...